on. Meantime, let's bring in former acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf. Uh, Chad, you've been kind of listening to this conversation we've had with Ted Williams. I mean, the DPS said it earlier. He said in active shooter situations, it's pretty simple. He says you put people in a line, in a pile if you have to, you go in and you keep shooting until the shooter is dead. Your thoughts on what we're hearing and finding out today? Well, look, I think the timeline that they've laid out is problematic on a variety of different fronts, and I think there's going to be a lot of uh, difficult questions to answer, both from a law enforcement perspective, but also from a, you know, the school system perspective. You know, what was that teacher doing? Why was the door propped open? Why did right. it continue to be propped open? So there's a variety of different questions. But look, at the end of the day, uh, when you're a law enforcement and you're not sure if, if it's a barricade situation or an active shooter situation, you have to err on the side of caution and you need to go in there and you need to make sure that the, in this case, the school is clear of any additional threats. You know that there's additional students in there. You know that they haven't all been evacuated as the timeline lays out because they actually start evacuating them later in that, uh, in that timeline. So the, you, you know that students are still there. And so you have to take that initiative to go through and make sure that those students continue to be safe. So, yeah. again, I think obviously a lot of decisions were made that are wrong at the end of the day, and we've heard Texas DPS say that. Uh, as more and more information comes out uh, in the days ahead, I think there's going to be a lot of hard questions to be answered uh, mm -hmm. and some questionable choices that are made at the end of the day. And so you're gonna, we're going to be looking to make yeah. sure that these officers were properly resourced. Did they have the equipment they needed? And if they didn't, why didn't they have it? Uh, most all uniform law enforcement officers that are properly trained and on the front line have, should have the necessary equipment to, to do whatever they need to do in this case and not have to wait 30, 40 minutes for more individuals with more tactical gear. They had some tactical gear. I mean, that's the whole question here is do you wait for the equipment? I mean, you know, a lot of the parents outside were saying, we'll go in, give us your guns, help us, we will go in and rescue our children. You had said uh, yesterday, and we've all said this, that the Border Patrol agents, the BORTAC units were heroes. And now we find out that the timeline, they arrived at 1216. They didn't breach the classroom until 1250. 34 minutes to get in the room and kill the shooter. Do you find that unusual, Chad? Well, I do. I don't. I don't know the reasoning behind that, right? Um, it, it, I, I can understand a little bit of a delay as the time that they arrive on the site, on the scene, to to ascertain what's going on, to get a little update, uh, but then to do their job at the end of the day. The border patrol and the BORTAC unit specifically are are first responders in many of these communities along the border, mm -hmm. uh, like everyone else. But they are not going to be the tactical on scene commander there. They're there as backup. Uh, they have a certain set of equipment and skill sets right. that many police officers don't have. So it doesn't surprise me that they were first through that door or, or the second through that door at the end of the day. They're heroes, uh, but they should have uh, they right. should have been put in a position to act much sooner. And I got to go. I got to go, Chad. But I just want to know, you talk about the acting commander tactical unit on the scene. Is that commander, is it possible to override him? The decision made that we're going to stand back because it's no longer active shooter. Can that decision be overridden in the field? Well, in theory, yes, it can be overridden. You know, you have a chain of command and law enforcement, just like military, believes in that chain of command. And a lot of what they do to be successful requires belief in that chain of command. So they don't like to overrule, but, you know, you're always going to be in certain situations. And I got to think that this was one where we said, this is not the wisest decision. I can still hear gunshots. I can, I, we know children are still in there. Maybe there's yeah. another way to do this. And the parents could hear the gunshots. The parents were across. They yeah. could hear the gunshots. They were begging with police. Everybody could hear the gunshots, and yet they stood. Chad Wolf, always great to get your insight. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.